living in an inner city home, you're completely surrounded by the sights and sounds of urban living. So how do you escape? By creating a green private oasis. And here is a garden that's inspired by a river delta. Creating a garden on a long, narrow, sloping, sandy block was a challenge most people would think twice about. However, landscape designer Barbara Landsberg saw the potential for a truly unique garden. You've created a chain of little garden rooms from the pool to the street on a very steep block. Each window from the house is looking into that space. And then how could we hold the whole thing together so that as you moved through it, it still felt big? Yeah. The swimming pool, as you can see, is here at the source. So it starts at the delta with lush tropical, and then it moves through a more temperate area, essentially as the waters flow, and then out into the front area where it's coastal Australian plants. Now, what Barbara has chosen here for this landscape is really classic, and it works literally all year round. You've got this beautiful Tristaniopsis, the water gum up at the top. It'll create this fantastic canopy and shade during the summer. Underneath it, I love this Blecknum lady fern and a nice row of philodendron xanadu. Now, all of this is going to be lush greenery all year round, but you need some seasonal colour. Well, we've got some flowers happening here on the quarter lines, and then down at ground level. These are lush green now, but later in the year, they'll have heliconia flowers on them. So this is giving this permanent greenery, and then some fascination with planting right along the fence line. Now, when you've got a big building next door and a fence line so tight to the pool, it's hard to actually create a screen. Well, Slender Weaver is the bamboo, and doesn't it work a treat? If you've got a small area at home, you can make it look bigger by blurring the boundaries. And right at the base is, again, Xanadu. Like all rivers that flow from mountains to the sea, they run through drier areas, and this is one of those. The landscape narrows and becomes more intimate. And then you have to be really clever with your planting. Because it's narrow and this is facing north, we need to allow the sun to really bake these beautiful rooms during the, the winter season. So the plants that are chosen perfectly, this is crepe myrtle. Now, I'm always showing you when these are in flower, but it's great to show you them dormant, quiet, asleep. All the flowers and foliage have gone, and then the sun can stream in. And when you've got raised garden beds, you'll have retaining walls. But why not convert one of the retaining walls into a bench seat? And then you've got these lovely textures like the little baby panda. It just brings you much closer when you can sit down and enjoy the plants. You may have noticed down here, we've got this wonderful hopscotch pattern. And what they've chosen here is the original Zoysia, an intimate space, and it really works. And then finally, our river landscape opens out into the delta as it arrives at the coast. The plant selection is a combination of Australian natives and exotics that take these conditions. The agaves, of course, you'd expect to see here. The frangipani, because it'll give colour and foliage texture later in the season. Above us all are jacarandas and the Sydney red gum. I love the way that they will ultimately create a space in which this garden will survive. But of course, we are in suburbia, so the screening is a lily pilly called Pinnacle, and along the fence line higher up is the Star Jasmine, an original plant that survived all the construction, which is really good to keep. But down here at ground level, beautiful grevilleas, a lovely one in flower just there. And the beautiful foliage of the Strobilanthes, isn't it glorious? A lovely Persian grey. And the West Australians are represented with the emu bush, the Eremophila. Often a little bit tricky where the, the water gets a little bit pooling around the root system, but here it's flowing through on our delta and it's quite happy. Foliage all year and then, of course, beautiful lilac flowers. And then when it comes to colour, we've got the Pride of Madeira, the Echium. These will have beautiful cobalt blue flower spikes right up here later in summer. But there's also some polygal here, the little beautiful variety in full flower. And that's pretty hardy, in fact, all of these plants are tough, tough, tough. No small space landscape would be complete without 
a rooftop garden. It maximises on the real estate, but it also adds to the environmental friendliness of the whole site. But up there, of course, it's absolutely exposure 10 out of 10. You've got the wind, the sun, the rain, everything is pelting onto those plants 24-7. So the plants have to be super tough. Now, what we can see, in fact, are the structural plants, the architectural plants that are there all year round, lovely, soft, billowing grasses and succulents. Underneath them is a whole range of herbaceous perennials. The minute the weather starts to warm up, they'll come into life. Challenging sites aren't always as difficult as they appear in the beginning. As you can see from this garden here, you can end up with some fantastic results.